glorify your name. Who can compare that to you? There is no like it. Love of God, we love you. Lion of Judah, we love you. Your hand was a wonderful Lord. Comparable God, your handy was a wonderful my love. Your handy was a wonderful lion of trouble, Judah. We will love you, oh God. We will worship you. We will worship you. We will worship you, Lord. about the God that hears, the God that understands, the God that feels, the God that knows. I know some people worship all, worship all kind of God, but the God of Christians is a living God, he's not a dead God. The God of Christians is an active God. He hears the cries of his children, he understands every pain that they go through. Now he goes through with them. There is nothing that happens in the life of a child 
of God that God is not concerned about it. I know we all have a kind of belief system. But I want you this afternoon for you to pause and know that God cares for your life. There might be somebody who might be listening to this message and going through all kinds of questions. I want you to pause and ask God. I want you to pause and ask God. How many times do you pause and ask God questions? Christians, we don't ask God questions. But we have a God that he said, if you seek me, you will find me. If you come after me, you will find me. In Matthew the chapter number 3. The disciples came to Jesus, uh, chapter 13. The disciples came to Jesus Christ and asked you, Why do you speak plainly to us? But to the public, you speak parable to them. And the Lord said, For you it has been given to you to understand me clearly. That was what he meant. Why? He said, because you want to know. So you come to ask questions. So that you might be taught. Any child of God who doesn't ask questions, you can't. If you are born again believer and you take things just like that, hey, you can take poison on a word. God delights in communication. It's not confrontation. But he delights in communicating with his children. So don't just take things just like that. To you, it has been given for you to understand the kingdom principles. And one of the kingdom principles is to know God and to understand him. Psalm 116, the psalmist said, I love the Lord because he has heard my voice. Verse 1. Am I pleased for my mercy? Because he inclined his ears to me. Therefore, I will call on him as long as I live. Did you hear that? The psalmist, the psalmist stand in a star contrast to Psalm number 115. Number 115, the psalmist declared that his love for the Lord, he declared his love for the Lord. Because he had heard many voices and many pleas for mercy. Ladies and gentlemen, having the God, having the God, you can worship. And you can hear him when you worship him. And when you speak to him, he responds to you. It's one of the greatest joy. It's one of the greatest joy. Something that Christianity, we can't take for granted. That when we talk to God, he answers us. Unlike any other religion. Unlike any other religion. Ladies and gentlemen, let's read something from Psalm 115. Psalm 115 talks about that the other people who are worshipping other gods, their idol of silver and gold, the work of human hands, they have mouth, but they cannot speak. They have eyes, but they do not see. They have ears, but they don't hear. They have nose, but they can't smell. They have hands, but they can't feel. They have feet, but they can't walk. They do not make sound in their throats. Those who make them became like them. Those who worship and follow idol, those who use any material that belongs to idol, you become like them. The reason why Christianity is going through so many struggles today, that we are preaching the gospel of holiness, righteousness, and truth, that can make a person worry for heaven, is that people are using the element of idol, so they become idol. They become dumb. They can mute. They are blind. So speaking spiritual things to them is very, very difficult. Unless a person repents of his heart 
and remove things that are of idol in his body or in her body, that person can never accept the things of the spirit. That can never. When you follow a God, when you worship a God who have ears, and the moment you use any of their material, you become like them. Did you hear what the psalmist said? Those who make them become like them. So do all who trust in them. So do all who trust in them. Whenever a person attach herself. Recently one of our sisters was talking about a young woman. A young woman. Elderly woman, average over 60 years woman, and this woman is having all kinds of artificial hair. You may hear me talking about this, you may not like it, but with this day, we don't talk about fornication and all these things because Christians they don't fornicate much, <laughs> they are wise. But the idol on your body is very difficult to take it away from because you have accepted that it is right. So, according to this sister. She was telling this woman to remove this and she said I will never remove this thing out of my life And she is a church elder's wife. I will never Them that use them Those who use things like that become one with them. They become rebellious Resistant to the things of the spirit. They can't accept God's way Yeah So the psalmist said Those who use demonic materials they become like one of them they that make them are like unto them so everyone that trusts in them oh Israel tries in the Lord he is their help and their shield Israel trusted in the Lord and the Lord became their shield lifeless God are worshipped by lifeless people lifeless God so the psalmist rejoice in God by his attentive ear and deliberate action our God has not only here but he react also he inclined his ears ladies and gentlemen we don't need to do anything to attract God's attention. Because when His ears is in our lives, He hears every sound that we make. Every tear that falls, He sees. There is nothing that happens in the child of God's life that God is not concerned about. Some worship God, which is a dead God. I want you to understand we have a God who is very sensitive to the crisis of his children. He is the most concerned about every situation that you are going through. Sometimes people come to me and say, Brother Gabriel, please pray, 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 because if God is not hearing me, check in your life. If God doesn't hear, that means you are not his child. He doesn't hear other children. He doesn't listen to sinners. But those who are working with God, he looks on their way every day. Ladies and gentlemen, sometimes we are like children who are frightened in the night storm. When I was a little boy, whenever it was raining, I'd go into my room, cover my head with my clothes. <laughs> cover my head. And I normally fall asleep whenever it is raining because I was afraid. Ladies and gentlemen, but whenever I call upon God, the Lord, I am afraid, come and cover me. He always responds to my cry. The Lord hear your cry. The Lord wants you to talk to him. So please don't go to any pastor to pray for you. Don't do that. Talk to God yourself. We have a God who is looking on our way. Every now and then stand and say, Lord, if you're looking for somebody to love you, look on my way. Lord, if you want somebody to worship you, look on my way. Lord, if you want somebody to preach for you, look on my way. Lord, if you want somebody to love you, look on my way. Always direct the attention on God on yourself. He is a God who does impossibilities. 
Put your trust and your confidence in this God. Ask God, Lord, are you looking on my way? Lord, are you looking on my way? Whenever you are praying, have a confidence that he hears. Whatever you do for him, have confidence that he has such, so long as you are walking in truth and in righteousness. Ladies and gentlemen, understand this, that he loves to hear the voice of his children. He doesn't want to fight us. He doesn't fight us. Rather, he hears us. He hears us. There are so many of you, you are so worried about so many things. There are so many Christians, even they don't trust, they don't have confidence in God. But I want you to understand the God that we serve, the God of a Christian, or the God of Christians, is a God that listens. In the first king, the chapter number 18, the verse 24. 1 King 18, 24. Then you call on the name of your God. And I will call on the name of the Lord. And the God who answered by fire. He is God. And all the people said, that is a good idea. This is when the Elijah confronted the Baal worshippers and questioned their trust and their confidence in this kind of God. To so call upon your God. And I will call upon my God who answer by fire. And he will answer. He will answer. Put your trust and your confidence in this God. Put your confidence and your trust in this God. For nothing, nothing can overcome those who put their trust and their confidence in God. Elijah said to the people and the prophet of God, Choose one ox for yourself and prepare it for you and many and call on the name of your God. But don't put fire under. Don't put fire under that kind of heap of fire that you put for your soul. And I will call upon my God. Beloved Christians, our God is a God that has been approved. The God of Christians is a God that has been approved. He's been approved. He has gone through all kinds of tests and he has two tests of time. Those who say that they don't believe and trust in this God, they don't do it by their own problem. But we have a good God. We have a God that stands for us. I want you to understand. We have God that sees, that hears, that speaks, that understands, that feels for us. He always had feeling for us before even he sent his son to come and die on the cross for us. He loved us so much. He loved us so much. So, when there are changes going on in your life, I want you to know that God is concerned. There are many Christians, they think that God is not concerned about them, but he is. There is no information about a child of God that God is not concerned about. There is nothing that man goes through that God is not concerned about. He's interested about anything, the minutest information about your life. So I want you to encourage you to come put your trust, put your trust and confidence in this God. He is not a God of Muslims who doesn't talk to them. Our Jesus, he speaks. He talks to us. There was a young man that was born. There was a young man that was born into a family. A Jewish family. And uh, they gave him two names. One name could be translated as small. We come from the root word meaning to pause. 
to dissolve or to stop. The first name that the parents give to him means to pause, to dissolve or to stop. Another name that the parents give to him had a root word which means ask. Ask. So he had two names, pause and ask. Or to seek or to inquire. Ask, seek or to inquire. Amazing that the boy grew up and really pause or stop for anything in his life. He never questioned anything that he was going through. He never questioned things that he was going through. Everything that he was doing, he was just doing with all his heart. He was a very headstrong person. But one day, all oh, that would change him from pursuing things without understanding the king. He finally has to post. In the form of a blind light that flashed upon him and that caused him to fall on the ground. Caused him to fall on the ground. And he heard a voice calling him, Ask! 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 He said, Who are you, my Lord? And the voice said, I am Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. The Son of the Most High God. He is a son. He has never changed his position as a son. Although he is a son, but he is God. He is a son and God. The name of that man was called Paul. His other name was Saul. The name Paul, or Paulus, comes from the root word, Paul. Which means to stop, or to pause, or to desist. To cease from one cause or to come to an end. To come to an end. So the same name was linked up to another pause. Pause. So when the Lord met Paul, which his name means to stop, he stopped him. He stopped him. God is able to stop everything that you are going through. God is able to stop every situation that you are going through which is unbearable. Call upon him. He will stop it for you. If you stop Paul, which means stop, pause, desist, resist from your work. And the Lord did not call the name Paul. Guess what? He called Saul. He had two names. Saul me asks, seek or pursue when the Lord wants your attention he call you a name that you have never maybe your mother called you pains God will call you through pains sister pains he might not call you through through blessing God will always call you in the name that will reflect on you he cares for you he desires that you have a personal relationship with him. Apostle Paul became blind. He became blind. When he was leading a lifestyle. That was not productive. The Lord called him. He called him and said. Saul, Saul. Why are you persecuting me? To persecute God means to do things against God. Ask yourself. Is my life persecuting God? Any act of unbelief is a persecution towards God. Whenever a born again believer does not believe, or when, if a person is a Muslim, is a Hindu, or he's any other thing, and say, I don't believe in Jesus, you are doing yourself harm. Ladies and gentlemen, Saul so, receive an invitation or an invite. That demanded him to ask God. Don't go to men. Go to God. Run to him. 
Because he has so many things for you that you have never known. He called him Saul, Saul, us, us. And what did Paul say? He finally asked a question and said, Who are you, Lord? And that was what led into his conversion. What led to Paul's conversion? What that he asked. Whatsoever you are going through, there is a chance to ask God. How do I ask? You ask by coming before him and asking him, just ask. Just ask. He wants to hear your voice. He's God that hears. He's a God that hears. And he understands. He said in Jeremiah chapter 29, he said, I know the thoughts that I have towards you. And it is not any thought, but it's a thought of good that will bring you to your expected end. And for those thoughts, for those plans to be materialized, you need to ask God. Some of you want to sleep and God will bring the promises. No, it doesn't work like that. You need to ask Him. That's all that you need to do. Lord, what is my next assignment? What is my next assignment? For I know the plan that I have towards you, declare the Lord. Plans for welfare, well-being. Plans for well-being. And not for calamity. To give you a future and a hope. If this God is on your side. If this God is on your side. You don't struggle. You don't struggle. You will go through rivers of waters, but he will be with you. The deeps and the height is always there with you. Nothing that the enemy can do against you. I want you to understand that Messiah still loves you. He's still revealing himself to those who are asking him. I want you to, this is what I want you to register in your spirit. Because Christianity has shifted into different dimensions. This is not how our Christian life is supposed to be. The life that depends upon men of God is not a Christian life. Seek personal relationship. Run from child who have never loved middlemen. Why? Because I don't trust any man. You may trust me, but I don't trust you. You may trust me, but I don't trust you. For that reason, I don't depend upon any person. I trust only in God. Put our spirit because that's how human beings we are. That's how human beings we're supposed to be. We are not supposed to depend upon any person. Because that is sin. Understand this and it will change your mind. When you come to God... Develop a personal link with him. Study your own Bible. Yes, it is fine. There's nothing wrong. Study with me. Because maybe I have a little knowledge. Not much. I have little knowledge above you. So that is not wrong. But after you have listened to a man of God, go back to God and talk to God. For it has been given unto you to understand. So he said, there are three points. He says, seek, ask, and knock. Seek, ask, and knock. A-S-K. Ask, seek, and knock. A-S-K. Ask, seek, and knock. Matthew chapter 7. That is the secret of our Christianity. We don't have a God who doesn't listen to us, who doesn't know what we say, who doesn't care. He cares about every minutest information about you. So I want to put this thing into your spirit. He thinks about you, he feels about you. More than your parents may feel about you. More than any person may think about you. So today, make it a point. Pause. Stop. Stop anything that you are doing and cease from your routine and your course. 
and with no pray occupancy seek him that never before heaven is reachable every person on earth can make heaven every person every person if you are determined to make heaven then ask God questions ask God questions he delights in the questions of his children and he will always want to answer them the Lord loves you so much he answered prayer the only person that the Lord doesn't answer his prayer is a sinner a person who always running away from God I want you to understand God cares for you he thinks about you sometimes he might be silent he might be silent but the silence of God doesn't mean that he has denied you keep on asking keep on asking until the broken relationship are built in Habakkuk chapter 1 verse 2 Habakkuk asked God oh Lord how long will I call for help and you will not hear <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I know that at some time we come into a very big and a deep situation that the only thing that we need is to hear God's voice as quick as possible. We call in the time of desperation. And now we expect God to hear us so quick that sometimes He doesn't. He wants you to wait because he does things in his time, not your time. Yesterday we were talking about a prodigal son who came to his father quickly. He said, Father, give me what will be mine. I want to be responsible. I want to have things on my own. I want to be in control. I want to be in charge. The father said, you don't know what you're talking about. There are certain times when we come to God and ask so many things. God said, you don't know what you're talking about. I'm your source. And you want to be responsible for things that have not been given to you for you to be responsible. These are the reasons why we fall into so many crises every now and then. If we can depend upon God and trust that he is God. And seek him every day. And allow him to continue to be God. Our Christian life will be more fruitful than every day what we are seeing. Let God be God. Hold your faith. Trust him that he is able to do what he has called you to do. Anything that he has told you to do, do it. Do it. But always link up with him. And allow him to influence your choices. Allow him to detect every good life and every choice in your life. And I tell you, your life will never be the same again. It's God that wants to have relationship with his children. Not temporal relationship, but eternal relationship. Today is my prayer that anything which is taking you out of that relationship will be bloated away. It's my prayer that anything that Satan wants to steal away from your life, that will not cause you to focus on God. Focus, focus, focus. Look unto him the altar and the finisher of your faith he will be always there for you when you stand and you never give up shall we pray say lord jesus i bring my heart and my mind to you i want to put my trust and my confidence solely on you lord reveal yourself to me let me walk in your counsel and fulfill my mandate and my purpose in this life Today I want to stop away from my routine life and turn away from anything that preoccupies my thought. And I present my body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto you. Please give me your heart. Give me your mind. Let me love what you love and hate what you hate. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Have a nice day.